is Nine News, first at five, with Alicia Loxley. Good afternoon. New South Wales police have admitted they're to blame after a German mother and her son were allowed to skip hotel quarantine in Sydney and fly to Melbourne. Laura Turner has more. Right now, there is 170 people isolating across Victoria, sweating on the results of COVID-19 tests for two German travellers who arrived in Melbourne on Saturday afternoon. Somehow, these two travellers were able to leave the queue for hotel quarantine in Sydney, book flights to Melbourne and board those flights and touch down here uh, at Tullamarine. Here is the Premier, Daniel Andrews, explaining what happened. These people should not have been here. They did get here. They had a conversation with an officer and during that conversation there's been a misunderstanding and a lack of communication and it was uh, thought by the police officer that there was actually an exemption in place. Now this is of course a major breach. Those two German travellers are right now holed up in hotel quarantine here at Melbourne Airport. They have already been tested for COVID-19 and the results came back as negative, which is good news. But we need to see the results of another test tomorrow to see whether those 170 people who are on the plane with them can be let out of isolation. Here's the Health Minister. If, in fact, uh, tomorrow the international travellers return a further negative test, the uh, incubation period and the chain of transmission will have been broken and we will release uh, those close contacts from isolation. Right now, anyone who passed through Terminal 3 here at Melbourne Airport on Saturday afternoon is being told to watch for COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, and, of course, if you were on that flight, VA838, that Virgin Airlines flight on Saturday afternoon from Sydney to Melbourne, you are being asked to isolate until given further information from authorities. This is a matter that is currently being investigated by the New South Wales government to find out exactly what went wrong and how. Well, masks will no longer be mandatory in most settings in Victoria and dance floors will be back up and running as the state moves to COVID normal. Reid Butler has more. Well, this is it, Alicia, Victoria's COVID summer. Here are the big changes in the state from tomorrow. There'll be no caps on guests at religious gatherings, weddings and funerals. A one person per two square metre rule does apply though. And instead of waiting until the middle of the month for that extended family get together from tomorrow, Victorians will be able to gather in groups of up to 100 outdoors and you'll be able to have as many as 30 visitors to your home. Mask rules have also been significantly relaxed. They won't be mandatory in most settings, including offices, but you must carry carry one for when you do need to wear it, like at the supermarket or on public transport. The hospitality sector is celebrating today too. Standing service will be allowed at bars and pubs from tomorrow. Nightclubs can also reopen and up to 50 people can get back on the dance floor as long as density rules are followed. The Premier, Daniel Andrews, today said he felt proud to be a Victorian. We have built this thing because we have steadfastly not listen to the loudest voices, not listen to the critics, but instead listen to the data, the doctors and the science. And next year, Alicia, plenty more Victorian workers can head back to the office. From January 11, 50% of the private workforce can return, 25% of the public sector will be able to. We have breaking news for you now and the Fraser Island fire emergency is worsening with residents on the east coast now evacuating as the escalating bushfire threatens to destroy homes. Right now the town of Happy Valley is under serious threat with three separate fire fronts creeping closer. Queensland's largest firefighting tanker has now been deployed to boost the fight in the field. In seven weeks, more than 82,000 hectares of World Heritage listed park has been destroyed and the ecological disaster is far from over. A motorbike rider has died during a charity ride in Perth. The woman crashed into a train line on the Mitchell Freeway before hitting two other motorcycles. Three others were injured and taken to hospital. One is fighting for life. The riders were among 1,000 people taking part in the 45th annual charity ride to raise money for the Salvation Army. The devastated parents of a teen killed in a house fire in Melbourne southwest have visited the home for the first time since that fatal blaze. Three-week-old baby Ivy, 19-year-old Abby Forrest and her 28-year-old partner Interpol Sahal were all remembered during a community memorial in Point Cook. You're not supposed to bury your children, so give them a hug and let them know that you love them. 
because you never know when you'll see them again. A 46-year-old woman has been charged with three counts of murder and arson causing death. Seven cyclists are in hospital after colliding with a police motorbike near Mwilumba in northern New South Wales. The leader of the pack, a 25-year-old man, suffered the most serious injuries and was airlifted to Gold Coast University Hospital. They were part of a nine-day National Road Series cycling event. Today was the final stop of the tour. A man has been shot dead in front of his girlfriend in Melbourne. Police say the couple was attending a small gathering when the night took a turn. Maggie Rayworth reports. A man has been shot dead during a small party at Oakley South overnight. Today, three people are in police custody and investigators believe one more is still on the run. Emergency services were called to this Centre Road apartment complex about three this morning. That's where they found a 40-year-old Footscray man dead. They located a deceased male um, who's died of a apparent gunshot wound. Two men were arrested overnight, escorted from the complex with bags covering their hands. A woman believed to be the partner of the man found dead is also assisting police. Police believe the shooter used a handgun. Behind this apartment complex, though, is a large quarry, and that's where police believe the weapon may have been dropped. A large search of the area was conducted today. The SES have been brought in to assist us with the search in relation to evidence uh, being the handgun and anything else that we may think is relevant for the purpose of the investigation. The 40-year-old's white ute was still parked outside. All tyres had been deflated. The exact circumstances surrounding this man's death are yet to be determined. Police are urging that man on the run to come forward. Anyone with information that could help investigators are being urged to come forward. The future of a rising NRL star is in doubt following a wild brawl on the New South Wales Central Coast. Canberra Raiders player Tom Starling was among four men charged last night after allegedly assaulting police at a bar. The NRL is aware of the incident and is investigating. Two Queensland fathers are being remembered as heroes after they drowned while saving their children from dangerous waters in Noosa. Sophie Upcroft has the story. Heartbreaking new details have been revealed about heroic attempts to save the lives of two young men who drowned yesterday off Tiwa Beach. Fathers Denny Jade Kabala and Richard Kat Bagan were camping together with their families when the kids went into the water to cool off. Both dads rushed in when the kids got caught in dangerous waters, but they themselves were taken by a current and drowned. A passerby pulled one of the men from the water and started CPR before trying to save the other, but they were both pronounced dead at the scene. We pulled this man in and just started CPR as soon as we could. And about I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes later, we heard somebody else say, over here, over here, and we pulled in the, the man that I initially saw that I was trying to get out to. Um, and we had pulled him in as well. That was um, that was Danny. Denny Jade's nine-year-old son was taken to hospital for treatment and has since been discharged, now with his mother and siblings. Both families are devastated and today have spoken about their fathers, calling their actions heroic and remembering them as proud and loving men. A man had to be rescued from dense bushland after falling down a steep embankment in Queensland. Sally Guyt reports. An experienced hiker has spent a night here at Mount Superbus in Queensland's Southern Downs after falling 10 to 15 metres down a steep embankment in dense bushland. The 29-year-old man, who has previously hiked Everest's base camp, was hiking with his 26-year-old brother yesterday when the accident occurred around half past 11, suffering a suspected spinal injury and possible fractured ribs. Managing to get reception and contact police, emergency crews commencing a large-scale rescue operation. Helicopters located the Brisbane men later found on foot by SES volunteers, police and fire and rescue crews, but due to the terrain, he could not be carried out. SEQ members were on their hands and knees yesterday, climbing up the hill to the location 
of the injured party. They've stayed there overnight, stabilised the patient, uh, looked after him and his injuries overnight. His brother winched out of the thick bushland, but a chainsaw had to be dropped in for workers to chop in the undergrowth and make space for the RACQ rescue helicopter to safely rescue the injured man. We've got a, a joint operation between all agencies, uh, including uh, Toowoomba Police, Ipswich Police, um, state emergency services from multiple areas. The man has now been taken to hospital for treatment. The Morrison government faces a big test from tomorrow as it pushes its foreign relations bill in Parliament. Federal political reporter Emma LaRouche. Passing the foreign relations bill is at the top of the agenda this week. It will give the federal government new powers to cancel agreements that all levels of government have with foreign countries. The new law seen as a message from the Commonwealth that it is solely responsible for foreign policy. The government says the pressure is on Labor to support the bill. We support the objectives and we support, we've supported the, the legislation. I hope that this minister and this government use the power that the government, that the parliament has given them wisely. But Labor did amend the proposed law. The government will send it back to the Senate tomorrow and demand it be passed without changes. The law is another point of friction between Australia and China. It could target deals already made with Beijing, like the Victorian government's decision to sign up to China's controversial Belt and Road initiative. Premier Daniel Andrews says it's in his government's best interests to maintain a good trade relationship with Beijing for Victorian exports and jobs, but he's not arguing against the Commonwealth's powers. That's entirely a matter for the federal parliament. Our relationship with China is not in a good place at the moment and it's in all of our interest to try and find a reset. The China-Australia tensions have gone from bad to worse and will be a challenge for the federal government well beyond the last week of parliament. In the news ahead this afternoon, Donald Trump hosts his biggest public rally since his election loss. A historic church housing New York's Liberty Bell goes up in flames. And a six-year space mission comes to a successful end in outback South Australia. Tonight, dramatic cliff rescue. The hours-long effort to save two men from our highest peak. Nine cyclists and an officer hospitalised in a shocking crash. The new emergency on Fraser Island. Authorities under fire. Two travellers skipping quarantine. And the smoke alarm warning we all need to hear. Nine News at six. Taste the new rice range from Rolls. Dinner adventures minus the plane ticket. Get yours delivered today. Only a roll. Rice here, rice now. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. I'm Irresistibly smooth chocolate to put the world on pause. Lindor, made to melt you by the Lindt Master Chocolatier. Parenting is hard, <gasps> harder than when we were kids. So how do we bring up the next generation? We're looking for Aussie families who can share their best parenting advice and tips. Apply now at parentingshow.com.au. At Image Blinds, you'll save 33% off roller blinds and awnings. Now's the time to cool your home for summer with quality made-to-measure roller blinds and awnings. Search Image Blinds for a free measuring quote and save 33%. Take a look. One little thing. What's one little thing going to do? What if that one little thing wasn't a lonely little thing? Instead, that one little thing was just one of lots of one little things that together can make big things happen. Then that one little thing can change the world. IKEA. 
violent cops. If you are a policeman and you inflict family violence, you'll get away with it. Who terrorise their own families. I just kept thinking the kids are going to die. He's going to kill the kids. The stunning and explosive truth. A family violence perpetrator was a family violence investigator. 60 Minutes Tonight. Donald Trump has followed through with his bizarre victory rally in his biggest public outing since he lost the election. US correspondent Alexis Daesh was there. Here in Valdosta, Georgia, the president is on the podium behind me right now, hosting a rally that feels very much like a flashback to the weeks before the election. There's just one difference. He has since been declared the loser of the 2020 election, but he has curiously called this event a victory rally. He is, strictly speaking, here in support of two Republican senators ahead of Senate runoff elections, which will decide uh, who controls the US Senate. He arrived with the First Lady, Melania Trump, who introduced him on stage. And uh, there were concerns from some Republicans that his visit here tonight would do more harm than good. Uh, they're worried that he would use this stage tonight to complain about the election outcome and what he believes are fraudulent voting systems. Uh, and that's exactly what he has done. One of the first things he said uh, was that he actually won the state of Georgia. You know, we won Georgia, just so you understand. And we won Florida. And we won... A lot of places. It's worth noting that this event is being held just as the state hits a grim milestone. It's just recorded the largest number of new coronavirus cases in one day. And uh, the president, during his speech, actually said that he expresses his condolences for victims of coronavirus. And he then went on to highlight his administration's achievements when it comes to developing vaccines. Vaccines are on their way at a level that nobody ever thought possible. It would have taken another administration five years. It took us seven months. And President-elect Joe Biden has confirmed he too plans to visit the state of Georgia ahead of the Senate runoffs on January 5. New York City's famous Liberty Bell has gone up in flames after the historic church it was housed in was gutted by fire. The massive inferno leapt high above the 19th century structure as around 200 firefighters battled to contain the blaze. No injuries were reported. Paris has been marred by another weekend of ugly violence as protesters clashed with police over a proposed security law. Cars were set alight and shop windows smashed in as demonstrators displayed their disgust over the controversial bill which would make it illegal to take photos of police on duty. An illegal free climber has enjoyed a breathtaking view of Barcelona, albeit briefly, before being arrested for his fearless act. The 24-year-old notorious stuntman says he scaled the tower in an attempt to help lift spirits for the holiday season. A space mission six years in the making has come to a successful end in South Australia's outback. As Harvey Biggs explains, fragments collected from an asteroid more than five billion kilometres away will now be researched by scientists from around the world. Well, this capsule turned into a spectacular ball of fire as it raced back into the Earth's atmosphere in the early hours of this morning, streaking across the night sky to the delight of people watching and filming from the ground. At about 10 kilometres from land, a parachute was deployed and it drifted to the ground near Woomera in outback South Australia. It's brought with it the first samples taken from an asteroid, ending a six-year mission run by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, which saw its robotic spacecraft, the Hayabusa 2, travel more than 5 billion kilometres across the solar system and briefly latch onto an asteroid called Ryugu, grabbing onto fragments of the rock which are now safely back in the hands of a team of scientists. It's been a great night. Everything was going smoothly. And uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy now. It's hoped these tiny samples could unlock the answers of some of life's most fundamental questions. How did our solar system develop? as well as the process that made our planet hospitable, like where elements such as water came from. And that will tell us what the conditions and ingredients for life was like right back when the Earth itself was formed and whether we owe asteroids like Ryugu uh, thanks to having these ingredients that give us life here. These samples will soon be back in Japan and will also be examined by a team of scientists from NASA. As for the spacecraft, it's already on its way to its next asteroid to get another sample. Amazing, isn't it? All right, now with all of the day's sport, here is Corey Norris. Thank you, Alicia. Good afternoon. After the break, the latest from the Aussie camp as a star quick is granted compassionate leave as Big Paddo enters the first test selection race. Reynolds farewells the Tigers as the Super League comes calling. And the Wallabies strike a chord in Sydney. 
These snakes are killing me. Kylie's sweet addiction. I am in heaven. Or sugar hell, a hardcore habit that's killing Kylie. That's your body weight in sugar consumed in a couple of months. I feel so ashamed. The man who promises to break this mum's craving in just three minutes. A Current Affair Monday. Pure sleep bedding don't just make mattresses. We can build you a better night's sleep. With over 25 years' experience, we are now Factory Direct. We understand the science of sleep. We know it's what's under the cover that counts. Visit our showroom at 12 Oasis Court, Clontarf. Summertime, full time, fun time with Wahoo Swim Vests. Designed to help kids gain water confidence and skills. Easy, adjustable fit in a range of great colours. Wahoo Swim Vests, available now from Goliath. On the cleanest day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a spit water. Australia's number one and hardest working pressure cleaner gets the dirt off as quick as an instant tax write off. Spit water clean, that's what it does. Who can help you to navigate an investment landscape that's constantly evolving? Who makes the complex simple? Who else but Elston? Visit elston.com.au or contact your advisor. At Image Blinds, you'll save 33% off roller blinds and awnings. Now's the time to cool your home for summer with quality made-to-measure roller blinds and awnings. Search Image Blinds for a free measuring quote and save 33%. Take a look. Need tyres? Get into Bow Repairs. We have great tyre brands and great tyre deals. Like buy three selected tyres and get the fourth free. Ho, ho, ho. So if you need tyres, get into Bow Repairs. Call today or shop online. Air conditioning installation from $499. Simply purchase a selected inverter split system from your local Harvey Norman, Domain or Joyce Main store and Advanced One Air Conditioning and Electrical Services will install that system in your home from $499. Stay cool this summer. Purchase a selected inverter split system from any one of these great stores and Advanced One Air Conditioning and Electrical Services will install it in your home from just $499. Terms and conditions apply. See advancedone.com.au. The boys are back in the slimy sequel. This whole place is going to blow like a frog on a hot plate. Ghostbusters 2, tonight on 9 Go. Cricket Australia has granted Mitchell Stark leave from the squad on compassionate grounds after being informed of a family illness. Meanwhile, fellow quick James Pattinson has impressed in Australia's A-clash with India in blustery conditions. He so far claimed 3 for 41. Got him! That man, Marcus Harris, at leg slip. Great captaincy from Travis Head. India are currently 7 for 200, approaching stumps on day one of the warm-up match. NRL and the West Tigers are set to farewell Josh Reynolds to the Super League in the coming days. It's understood he's agreed to a three-year deal with English side Hull, bringing his tumultuous stint at the joint venture to a close. His departure will free up around $500,000 in the Tigers' salary cap for the 2021 season. Or well, the Wallabies are the talk of the town, but not for their on-field performance, but for a stirring rendition of the national anthem ahead of last night's clash with Argentina. Young singer Olivia Fox led the squad in singing an Indigenous version of Advance Australia Fair. But unfortunately, they couldn't top it off with a win, drawing with the Pumas 16 all. And Chelsea is back on top of the Premier League despite falling behind early against Leeds at Stamford Bridge. The Blues fought back to claim 3 1 victory. Elsewhere, Manchester United also came from behind to defeat West Ham by the same scoreline. That's our sport this afternoon, Alicia. Great stuff, Corey. Thank you so much for that. Your Monday weather forecast is next, but first, here's a look at what's coming up in tonight's Nine News at 6 o'clock. Tonight in Nine News, heartbreaking interview. The 23-year-old hero of the TY Beach rescues brought to tears, recounting his desperate efforts. The two men who couldn't be saved remembered. Get out now. A Fraser Island village evacuated as a bushfire closes in. Hear from residents. Police bungle the stunning admission from officers after letting two German tourists skip quarantine. And the tiny capsule on home soil solving mysteries of the universe. Nine News is at six o'clock. Who is the world's number one superstar family? These guys are about crazy. 20 to 1. Tuesday, 7.30. 
Guess who's back? But you never left. Yes, I did that rose from the dead. And now I'm here to slay them with flows and some punchlines that'll go over your head. Drop, turn back, I'm a caution in red. I'm your worst nightmare stood over your sled. So them girl try con me, but I smell deep feet like a hole in your threads. Wow, she's sick and she's bad. She sings and she raps. She's crinkle and wow. Go full Christmas with a feast for less. Aldi. Good. Different. At each stage of life, Burrell know how to manage your money. Getting started, quality retirement advice, insightful portfolio management, overseas investing. Visit burrell.com.au. You'll be well looked after at Burrell. I know you say only you can drive your car, but when I get my licence, that's all going to change. Won't it? <laughs> and you can't expect me to buy my own car. And PD Insurance gave you such a good price. <laughs> like, remember the time you got rear-ended? And it would be nice not to have to ask to borrow the car. Maybe I should get a job. PD Insurance. Preferred drivers, exclusive discounts. Say yeah to more power with the Amarok V6 and get your first three repayments on us. Volkswagen. On the cleanest day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a spit water. Australia's number one and hardest working pressure cleaner gets the dirt off as quick as an instant tax write-off. Spit water clean, that's what it does. Taste the new rice range from Rolls. Dinner adventures minus the plane ticket. Get yours delivered today. Only a rolled. Rice here, rice now. All the highs, all the lows. It's always a roller coaster. Hold on tight. Here we go. On Millionaire Hot Seat. Weekdays on 9. This weather report brought to you by Rolled. Fast, fresh Vietnamese. Taste the new rice dinner range. Order online now. To the weather details for you now, and the satellite chart shows cloud with a trough stretching from northern WA to northeastern New South Wales. The system is triggering showers and storms, while northerly winds ahead of the trough are dragging hot air across Queensland. In the southeast, there's cloud and some showers with gusty westerly winds, and there are also some showers and storms over the top end. Taking a look at today's temperatures, a sunny day in Cairns, a top of 31 degrees, 33 and partly cloudy in Brisbane, sunny in Sydney, reaching 31 degrees today, 19 in Canberra. Showers and windy in Melbourne and Hobart, reaching maximums of 21 and 17. 21 in Adelaide today and it was a sunny 25 degrees in Perth. It'll be another sunny but warmer day in the west tomorrow under the influence of a high. A cold front will cross the southeast and bring rain, cool and gusty southerly winds and possibly snow to parts of Victoria and Tasmania. And a trough will generate more showers and storms across the tropics, eastern and central Queensland and northeast New South Wales. So in Sydney tomorrow, a sunny day with a top of 30 degrees on the way. Showers, possible storms and windy in Melbourne and just 18. It'll be 34 in Brisbane with possible showers and storms. Sunny and 33 degrees in Perth. 19 and windy in Adelaide with morning showers on the way. Showers in Hobart too, heading for a top of 17 degrees. And it'll be a partly cloudy start to the working week in Canberra with a top of 19 degrees. And that is Nine's Afternoon News. Our next bulletin is coming up for you at 6 o'clock. Thanks for your company.